Hey, everybody. Hey, I'm Elizabeth Alfano, host of the Awesome Vegans podcast. I am live in San Diego with Dr. Michael Greger. And it's been a long day here in San Diego. I drove from L.A. to see you. Ah, wonderful. I'm glad you survived the traffic. Yes, I did. I knew that this was the only way to get him, so I cornered him in San Diego. Thanks for being here. I'm so happy to be here. I love Jane Unchained. Who doesn't love Jane Unchained? We all love Jane Unchained. And we all love Dr. Michael Greger. And your book, How Not to Die. Yes. And your cookbook, How Not to Die, is how a lot of people know you, but I think they also know you because you're a little bit of an internet sensation. Can I say that? Sounds good to me. It's true. It's true. Okay, well, we don't have a lot of time here today, so I'm going to get right into it. Uh, I would be remiss if I didn't ask you a bunch of health questions since I have the doctor in the house. Doctors in the house. So some things are very basic. Some things I know. So for me, I'll say I understand the relationship to meat and cardiac disease. So animal fat clogging your arteries leading you to heart disease, this I can follow. Okay. What's harder for me is the connection of animal fats to cancer. Help Hmm. me with that connection. Okay, not necessarily animal fats, but uh, animal protein probably plays a larger role in terms of cancer. It's probably an IGF connection. So IGF-1 is the insulin-like growth factor 1. It's a cancer-promoting growth hormone within the body that's boosted by the consumption of animal protein. So that's meat, egg white, and dairy protein. And that's why we think um, is the underlying mechanism for why those who eat more animal products are at increased risk of a number of our uh, leading causes of cancer death and, more excitingly, why... Mm -hmm. Dr. Dean Ornish was able to show after he reversed our number one killer heart disease, moved on to killer number two cancer, the first to show that diet and lifestyle alone, this plant-based diet and lifestyle, could reverse the progression of cancer. No one ever showed that before, Um, and he was doing it with a plant-based diet. Now, could it, is it just because he got rid of the animal protein, of the animal fat, or is it because he added all these wonderful anti-cancer components of fruits and vegetables and other whole plant foods? It's probably a combination, combination. of both. Eating health. So you can't just live off of vegan donuts and expect to have the same kind of benefits that we saw in these remarkable studies. So that was going to be my next question for you. So we say plant-based diet, and then we have all these great things like, I say great because I indulge, Beyond Meat yeah. and the Impossible yeah, yeah, yeah. Burger and um, there are more and more processed right, foods. Right. And then they go down the line to less processed foods, like uh-huh. tofu is processed to a certain yeah, extent, sure. Se- seitan is processed, yeah, tempeh yeah. is processed. So take me through, at what point do you say, okay, well, this is a plant-based food, but it's right, just right. too processed to be good for you. Well, you know, so these are fantastic stepping stone foods. Mm, I mean, that's right, how yeah. I view them. You know, yeah. not everyone can go from, you know, slathering their bodies with, you know, burgers and milkshakes their whole lives to, you know, kale, quinoa, black beans, and all the really healthy... They could if they had my cooking. Well, see, but... For the record, people. People don't even know how to cook. I mean, people don't even know how to make rice. They don't... I mean, some real basics, right? Um, And so, you know, having that same taste and texture and meatiness and the... You know, these are familiar comfort foods. This is the mac and cheese. This is the cheeseburger. I mean, you know, so better Absolutely. Absolutely. But I don't want people to stall there. I want people to continue to improve their diet, and that is more whole plant foods, um, uh, just because the processing usually adds some sodium, move some of the fiber, etc. So help me out. If you were to have a diet of whole plant foods and these kind of foods, what would the ratio be? Like once a week or twice a week is okay? Or well, like so I did, so um, I have in, so in the second half of How Not to Die, you know, I wanted to make kind of a practical guide, not just kind of a reference book. Yes, your um, daily checklist. Right, so the, so I center my recommendations around a daily dozen checklist of all the foods and I encourage people to fit their daily routine. So, you know. Flaxseed, I gotcha. Oh, there we go. Greens every day, the healthiest vegetables, yeah. berries every day, the healthiest fruits, tablespoon of ground flaxseeds, quarter teaspoon of turmeric, the best beverage, how much exercise, etc., to encourage people, just to inspire people to get some yes. of the healthiest of healthy foods in their diet. And so those are the so-called green light foods. So I have this kind of traffic light system. There's another tool that I have. Oh, and the Daily Dozen free app, iPhone, yes. Android, download get it for it. free and enjoy yes. it. Um, and so, but the, the traffic light system. So green light foods are foods you should maximize. These are the whole okay. plant foods. These are fruits, vegetables, legumes, beans, split peas, chickpeas, not those whole grains, not the seeds, or yes. spices, mushrooms, <laughs> basically real food that grows yes. out of the ground. These are our healthiest choices, right? That's the maximize category. And then there's the yellow light foods, right? 
And so these are foods that we should minimize. And that's where these processed foods come in. I see. So in moderation, but they're the yellow in the traffic lights. And light then system. red is ideally avoid, certainly on a day-to-day basis. But look, it doesn't matter what we eat on our birthday or holidays or special of occasions. Course. It's really the day-to-day stuff that adds up. But on a day-to-day basis, we really should try to eat healthy. Yes, right. Sure. I completely agree. And I do think... Cooking is the key to that. Mm. So any kind of relationship you can have to your own food, you start making those decisions for yourself in the kitchen, and then you know your own tastes even. You know, when I went from a meat-dairy diet to vegan, I had no idea that I liked sweet potatoes because oh, I never right. had them. You oh, know, I just And then right, you right. discover, yeah. and now it's the right. bomb, and that's all I right. eat. No, so, no. Yeah. And, some of the, and some of these kind of ethnic cuisines, like yeah. a lot, some people have never tried Ethiopian. Very yeah, never, right. But then all of a sudden, Okay, you can't eat your favorite fast food restaurant. Oh, what's this place? Oh, right, what's yeah. it? And then they, oh, okay. these, and just totally expands, you know, mind blowing. And it's like, I can't believe I live my life without hummus or baba ganoush or whatever. I mean, all these great foods. Right. <laughs> I think this is fascinating because so many people say, oh my God, you're vegan. You must have nothing to eat. Ah! And I think it's the exact opposite. When right. I was eating meat and dairy, I irony. had nothing to eat. That's because I had limited myself to these the things that I was... St- boring. Yes, obsessed Limited. With. Yes. And so, and that's what people find. They actually have more, more exciting choices. diets, more right. variety... Yeah. Um, than they ever had before, eating the kind of just standard boring food. Okay, so I want to hear it from the doctor because, of course, no one's going to take my word for it. But I understand there's a connection to eating animal fats and erectile dysfunction. Oh, Help sorry. me with that. Yeah, no, no. So saturated fats in general. Um, and so uh, oh, there's okay. three things that increase your cholesterol, in your, increase your cholesterol, impair your artery function. One is trans fats, these partially hydrogenated oils found in meat, dairy, and junk foods, including some vegan junk foods. Oh, okay. Um, uh, there, there's two varieties, for example, of tofuti cream cheese. One has trans fats, one doesn't. Um, uh, tofuti cream cheese has trans fat? Well, well they used it. to. Okay. Well, so so they, the original okay. tofuti did, and then they came out with a trans fat free version, but I think they're both actually still for sale, or the word okay. last time I checked. Okay. And so you want to. One's blue and the other one's orange. I forget okay. the packaging. However. Labels. We read labels. Right. Absolutely. So nothing with partially hydrogenated at all. So it's not right. just all meat and dairy. And the saturated fats, again, mostly meat and dairy, but there are some rare saturated um, uh, um, plant fats, such as the tropical oils like coconut oil. So okay. coconut oil, palm oil, palm kernel oil. Um, so we want to minimize those in our diet. Um, and uh, then uh, and then the third thing is dietary cholesterol. That's found exclusively in the animal kingdom, concentrated primarily in eggs. But a- those three components can impair our artery function, stiff our arteries, have this inflammatory effect, and cripple our arteries function to relax um, and dilate normally for optimum blood flow. And typically we think about optimum blood flow of the heart in terms of decreasing angina, that crushing chest pain people have when they have heart disease, or decrease their risk, their strokes, improve their athletic performance, improve their kidney function, improve their liver function. All of our organ systems rely on blood flow to bring oxygen nutrients to get rid of waste products. And so no wonder the same diet, the heart-healthy diet, is also the same brain healthy diets, the liver healthy oh. diets, the kidney healthy diets, the one oh, diet to healthy. kind of rule them all. But yes, for men, there's one particular organ that uh, that they 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 want to make sure they have enough blood flow, and it's the same thing. I mean, it's yeah, the same. same in thing, fact, yes. penile artery is about the same caliber of the main coronary arteries that supply the heart. Um, and so erectile dysfunction can actually be a precursor. It can actually be can be like a, oh, a warning, warning sign, sign that if you're if you're if your blood flow is going down that organ, your blood flow is going down to other more, more critical organs in your brain, increase your risk for stroke, and in your heart. Um, and that should be, in fact, it's even considered in medical literature. Uh, it's called a cardiac equivalent. Why we should assume if you have um, erectile dysfunction that you have heart disease. Oh my gosh! And you should be treated as such. And so not working on things like Viagra, but actually paying more attention to the oh, overall right. system. And so and so no, don't mask right, yeah. this. Yeah, yeah, you're right. And so the, right. Oh so my taking gosh. Viagra, what you're doing is you Masking are the you're symptoms. bypassing the right. So you're putting right. on a band aid, and when that should be that could be saving someone's life. Wow. That's how a urologist can save someone's life. That's how a, oh. like a dermatologist can save someone's life because, you know, get people off dairy, clear up their acne. Yes, and exactly. yeah, okay, and that, that's what benefit. the teenager cares about. But yeah. what, the, what you're really doing is you're preventing them from dying from the number one killer of women, which is heart disease. Uh, okay, so a couple things are frustrating to me yeah. within this discussion. Yeah. One is... 
for a while we thought coconut oil it was great it was the thing it was and now it's not and so this this to me is very confusing like some things come in as fads or Remember. trends and and then they're not and so i feel like it's very hard to get one source of information. For example, you have the paleo diet, you have the keto diet, you have the plant-based diet. And for many people out there, I mean, we vegans know what's what, but you know, for the rest of the world, it's very hard to decide. And I can see how people can be confused and think paleo is the way to go. only there were a website <laughs> that pulled together the science <laughs> this and, is such a and fun didn't interview. just cite the science, <laughs> didn't just talk about the science, but yes. actually showed the science. Yes. Here's the paper, here's the graphs, here's the yes. quotes, here's the links to the PDFs you can download yourself, read it, make sure nothing's taken out of context. That's what we now when it comes to something as important as your family's health. Right. right? Why if there's gamble? any decision to be made based on the best available balance of evidence, that should be it. If you are buying a toaster on Amazon, then what's some random stranger's opinion? Right. Okay, then that makes sense. I'm interested. Oh, you like the toaster? You know? Okay. Four stars. But when, stars. so someone but someone at your gym says, Oh, I think you should eat this way. Or someone at the checkout line reading some magazine, right? We're not interested when it comes to the life and death decisions. We are not interested in beliefs or opinions or dogma. We're interested in the evidence, and so that's why I started nutritionfacts.org. Nutritionfacts.org. So you're going to get the app, and you're going to get the book. Great. And you're going to go to nutritionfacts.org, uh, and of course, how not to die book and cookbook. Uh, okay, so thank you for doing all that. But I will say, I saw you in the movie. Um, uh, eating You Alive, and Ooh, Paul David yeah. Kenner Jr., the director of that film, was actually on this show. Oh, fantastic. But I loved that film, oh. and, and a big point of that film was doctors consult with their patients on nutrition, and a lot of them are not schooled in nutrition. Right, right. Well, and this the doctors is, aren't schooled. Correct. Right, that's right. what I'm saying. That's what yeah. I mean. The doctors aren't schooled in nutrition, and they're actually giving out advice that maybe is not good advice. Right. Again, yeah. one more point. It's very frustrating right. for the average consumer right. to get nutritionfacts.org. Right. And, you know, part of that is because what they're own eating, right? I mean, you, you're not going to expect a doctor who smokes a pack a day to right, advise their patients to stop smoking, right? right? And that's right. actually what the data shows. Doctors who don't exercise are significantly less likely to advise their patients for physical activity. And on and on down the list, obese physicians less likely to, 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 to advocate weight control. And so, you know, doctors are eating this, these, these foods contributing to these same dietary epidemics of disease. And so, you know, it's like this cognitive dissonance. You know, what do they just have for lunch? And they're going to tell their patients, right? But why isn't there more nutrition in medical school? Well, I mean, but that, look, I mean, big pharma plays a big role in, uh, yes. in financing medical education and practice. Um, there's reimbursement. There's, 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 you know, kind of institutional constraints. There's reimbursement issues. Uh, physicians aren't, in general, paid to, you can't bill for counseling someone on a healthy diet and lifestyle. Right. Um, except under Follow the kinda, money. Um, uh, certain circumstances. Um, and so look, they just weren't taught. There's an ignorance. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, we, we graduate medical school without this powerful tool in our medical toolbox. So if all we know are pills and procedures, that's what we're getting paid for. Right. That's what we're taught to do. Well, that's what we, we do. It, and that's why it's just so important to have great voices out there educating the masses. That would be this guy. Uh, okay, so someone recently told me, I said, oh, I'm making lunch and tofu come to my house. And he said, and I'm quoting now, and I, I'm so happy you're here to dispel this once and for all. Tofu gives men breasts, and that's what he said his doctor told him. So wow. please, for the record, set what us straight on soy. <laughs> yeah, so... so uh, yeah. I would, I mean, I mean, uh, so I've got tons of, um, so people interested in, in uh, science, uh, tons of videos on soy, talking about soy and breast cancer, talking about soy and prostate cancer, talking about, uh, go on down the list and dispelling some of these ridiculous myths. Um, and, uh, and so, so soy consumption is actually beneficial for male and female health. And the, I, I think the confusion uh, surrounds these phytoestrogens. Um, these estrogen-like compounds, mm -hmm. um, and they think estrogen. You think, oh, they have that. That these phytoestrogens have pro-estrogen effects mm -hmm. within the body, but actually, um, uh, are what's called a selective estrogen receptor modulator, meaning it has pro-estrogen effects in some tissues of the body, but actually has anti-estrogen effects in other tissues of the body. So, for example, for women, 
Um, soy consumption decreases hot flashes and increases oh. bone strength, reduces bone fractures. Those are both pro-estrogen effects, but it also dramatically decreases the risk of breast cancer and increases breast cancer survival, oh. decreases breast cancer recurrence. Those are anti-estrogen effects. Oh. So you kind of get the best of both worlds yes. when you eat these whole soy foods. And as you mentioned before, there are different you know levels of processing. Even tofu is kind of it's kind of the the white bread of the of the soy kingdom. You take a whole soybean, you remove half the fiber, half the minerals right. and you're left with tofu but soybeans are so incredibly healthy you remove half the nutrition still have a really healthy food but think of tempeh you, know, te- yes, you, know, right. you can actually see yes. the individual soy I it's actually tempeh. a whole soy food yes, uh, miso edamame what a great yes. snack yes, those yes, immature yeah. green soybeans mm-hmm. in the pods yes. what a, you know yeah. and so you know I, I would just you know yeah so so there are healthier and less healthy and uh and yeah you and so men and women alike should eat all sorts of legumes, beans, split peas, chickpeas, and uh, and soy and, and lentils, and and doesn't have to be soybeans, but that's a healthy choice. And you're not even talking about the protein. So for those who oh. care about it, like so, my breakfast of choice, and I I guess I'm using the white bread of the soybean, but I've so I've got tofu, yeah. hemp seeds. Ooh, yummy. Thank you for you because Delicious. when I don't have time to actually uh, grind my flaxseed, I do oh. hemp seeds. Okay. Huh? Raw oats, berries. And a Ooh. tablespoon of maple syrup. Uh-huh. And I do it every day because it's fast. And I can Sounds do delicious. it. Okay, 19 grams of protein. I'm just saying, y'all, 19 grams of protein. Okay, if you care about protein, which I really don't. But I'm just saying for those who do, it's 19 grams. And you can use date syrup instead of maple syrup, which is a whole soy food. It's just dates and water mixed together. And then you get all those minerals, all the one of the things. Date There's syrup. not much in maple syrup. There's not much in nutrition. You're just missing out. And it's just as sweet. Well, I could end the interview right now and be super happy. Date syrup. I've Absolutely. never even heard oh, of that. You can that. buy it and make it. I have a recipe in the cookbook, I'm not that cookbook, on for making your own, but it, you can just buy it. Yeah. And it's a whole. And I've never it's just seen like, it. It's just like date sugar is, is not sugar, it's just ground pulverized dates. dates. It's a whole. I mean, it's a whole food. Um, and with the date syrup, they just basically whip up dates with hot water and it just creates this this syrup okay so it's not great for like hot drinks like coffee or something just because it has fiber and it's got a little chunky kind of yeah Yeah. but it's perfect for anything you use maple syrup or honey for okay okay well that's great okay date syrup people no and and it's really tasty i mean yeah i I love dates well who doesn't love dates no i love dates okay so in your book how not to die there are a couple other areas that i was very surprised to see could be ameliorated with a whole food plant-based mm. diet like depression. Yeah, that was great. So, you know, the first half of the book is uh, 15 chapters, one on each of the 15 leading causes of death. Talk more a little diet, maybe playing preventing, arresting, or reversing each of our top 15 killers. Um, and I knew, you know, the heart disease, high blood pressure, diabetes, slam dunks, right? right and yes, not sure. just for right. prevention yes. and arresting the disease, but potentially even reversing the progress of the disease. Um, but for others, I mean, I was surprised. So, so um, uh, I think uh, the killer number ten these days um, is uh, suicide, uh, primarily from suicidal wow. depression. Um, and what I was so um, uh, what, what a depressing chapter to write. No, but there was all this hopeful information on improving mood through diet. That's incredible. So me. we've had these all these po- these observational studies, these these population studies showing that people who eat, for example, vegetarian, um, uh, ha- have significantly improved mood, less anxiety, less depression. Mm-hmm. But these are kind of cross-sectional studies, snapshot in time studies. So maybe people who eat healthier get better moods, or maybe people who are happy don't need those comfort foods, right? And eat, and, and maybe people happy eat better foods, or maybe right, eating better foods yeah. makes you happy. happy it's right. like, you, yeah, so yeah. you don't know which right. the, the direction of causation. And so you, we couldn't really, you know, there's just this association, this correlation, mm-hmm. until um, uh, research at the University of Arizona sat down and actually put it to the test, did a randomized controlled trial, mm-hmm. took people in the standard American diet, randomized them into two groups, one continued to eat their miserable diet, and the other half <laughs> removed, uh, you know, meat, eggs, uh, 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 meat, meat, eggs, fish, um, and uh, so basically, kind of plant-based diet 
and significant improvement in mood within two weeks. Two wow. weeks. I mean, so like drugs can take months to affect, right? And you no, know, obviously just good side effects with a healthy diet. So significant improvement in mood within two weeks. And that's just really exciting to see that kind of data. Super impressive. So I can understand things like cutting out alcohol. I can yeah, see yeah. where that would alleviate some depression. Okay. And I can understand cutting out highly processed foods or sugars because you get this high and then you crash. And that's yeah. always hard. But to hear that cutting out meat and dairy would alleviate depression, that's really exciting. Well, so the, uh, so the thing is the rachidonic acid. So there's this inflammatory. Um, and so the, the reason that we think um, going plant-based so improves mood is it decreases neuroinflammation. It decreases oh, the inflammation within our brains um, because we're not uh, eating this this pro-inflammatory arachidonic acid. So we're basically just decreasing. So it's found predominantly concentrated in eggs and chicken, uh, kind of the two primary sources of the American diet. So that to me is also very fascinating because I'll often hear people say, oh, okay, you know, I'm trying to be healthy. I've cut out eating beef, but I still eat fish, chicken, and yeah. eggs. And you're yeah, so sinking yourself. Yeah, so that would be yourself. the worst. Yes. So, so in, terms be the of the, worst. in terms of the mood data, it would be worse just because mm-hmm. there's higher. I mean, if that's indeed the mechanism, but that was kind of the hypothesized mechanism. Mm-hmm. So very fascinating. Okay. Well, uh, I have oh, some lists of, of questions that I'd like to ask you. And some of them are just one-word answers right off the top of your head. You'll know them. Okay. And some are a little bit more pensive, and we'll see where okay. you go with it. Okay. All right. So I'm ready. What's your favorite snack? Bracing myself. Oh, my God, I just found a new one. <laughs> of course, I'm fickle. So, But but today, it is dried dragon fruit. You get it at Costco, these bags, literally one ingredient, and they're crunchy. It's just like, it's just dried dragon fruit. I think it's called crunchy dragon fruit or whatever. Oh, my God, so delicious. One ingredient, delicious. Someone just gave it to me at this conference. Okay. I was just like, oh, my God. I love- <laughs> and see, I need things that are non paris because I travel so much. Right, yes, Not yes. light. Yes. Can get through airport security. Like, and yes, so it's right, like, that's yes. just perfect. Yeah. Oh, my God, it's so delicious. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. dried dragon fruit. There we go. Check it out. It's up there with uh, date syrup, which is wonderful. Okay, so what is your go-to meal? You're on the run. You're super busy. You don't have oh, a lot no. of time. It's the thing you walk through the door. You know you can make it in 10 minutes. It's always good. Oh, that's a good question. I mean, usually I'm stuck at some airport food court somewhere and, and desperate. Uh, um, there is um, actually at this conference here. So we're at the uh, International Plant-Based Healthcare uh, Nutrition Conference, one of my favorite conferences. Um, and the, the, you go to all these vendors and all sorts of amazing things. You know, there's this one company, Leafside Foods, actually based in Arizona, I think. And they make these all whole food, plant-based meals, just add water. It's like freeze-dried, Ooh. right? So great like for soups, hiking. Right, mm-hmm. so great for, but great for travel, right? Yes, so what you yes. do is you take, we have a we have a coffee maker here in the room. They're a hotel coffee maker. And, yeah. you add hot water, and they make <laughs> soups and they have bowls and they have, yeah. you know, like... Um, and so that's what I've been doing lately on the road. Because otherwise, I would get to a, you know, be late at night. Right, yes. Um, you know, if I can find a Whole Foods, they have a hot bar, they have a great yes. salad bar. I yes. can always get food there. But right. If I'm stuck in the middle of Arkansas, it's like, you okay, know, Taco yeah. Bell bean burritos or some yes. horrible, you know. So you travel to Arkansas. That's interesting. Uh, well, that's where they need me. Yes, they don't need me is. in sunny California. Come on. They're already <laughs> on board. I need to be a miss. In fact, CDC just released a new obesity graph. And it's like, uh, and it's like deep south, Mississippi. Yes, We're course. talking obesity rates over 35% on average well, in some of these states. What's amazing to me is that we have so many cooking shows. People are obsessed with cooking shows. All this like cooking food, cooking food that people want to know about and yet people don't seem to be learning anything they will on this show that's right that's right set them straight okay you say that you travel and you're never home but on the days that you are home yeah yeah what are we always going to find in your fridge well actually so a sweet potato would be i mean so i mean so i you know i poke a few holes rinse in the water throw it in the microwave move on yeah yeah, done a few and you sprinkle a little cinnamon on yeah and it's just like you know or you you put in your your coat pocket if it's freezing outside you got a (laughs) hand warmer that's it then you can eat later on and that's why I used to do that in medical school. I'm up in Boston biking through the snow. Sweet potatoes, black beans, salsa. Ooh, yummy. Done. Move on. Oh, that's a good go. one. Oh, that's, go great. Ooh, that's even better. So, you know, throw so some beans on, right? Throw some Canned beans, beans on, yeah, and then Love some, it. yeah, so syrup fast. Okay, Wonderful. but what are we always going to find in your fridge? What's the one oh thing we're always going to oh find in your fridge? Greens, kale. Kale, kale arugula, okay. any, any okay. dark green leafy vegetables. In fact, that's, I mean, that's why I go shopping. Because everything else, right, you, you, could, you get bulk, you could, yes. but you always got to get fresh greens. And if, if my garden isn't cooperating like it wasn't this year. 
Um, then yeah, fresh greens. Um, and so yeah, 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 yeah. So okay. always, I mean, probably so collards probably my favorite. Collard greens um, is your but, favorite. But uh, so collards are real. But yeah, I but, like I always find kale. Um, and then and then always as a backup, I've got frozen greens. You open up my freezer, oh. half frozen greens, half frozen berries. I have and a lot so of frozen spinach. Oh, great. See, there yeah. you go. Yeah, right? yeah, so you always, spinach, so there's yeah. no excuse. You're making like, like pasta sauce. I'm like, yeah. you can always throw in frozen yeah. greens, yeah. Or canned beans. Right. You can add nutrition to any dish by adding greens and beans. And it doesn't hurt it to freeze it? It doesn't, you don't lose some of the nutrients? No, in fact, freezing? sometimes frozen uh, fruits and vegetables can be healthier because the so-called fresh produce has been sitting on a ship from New Zealand for a week, losing nutrition every day. Whereas, you know, oh, greens and berries can be frozen on the day of picking and actually yeah. Contain more nutrition um, oh. than the so-called fresh produce. I mean, oh. the ideally fresh, right. local. I mean, of that's that would be the ideal, but you can't of course, get that year round, yeah. Okay, moving on with my list here. Do you have any pets, and if so, do you think they're any different than farm animals? Do I think my pet? They're much smaller. <laughs> I would uh, hope no, so. No, uh, uh, um, we have dog to kitties. You have a dog and two kitties. Yeah, Rose. Yeah. Do yeah. you think Rose, Emily, and Ralph? Do you think they're any different than farm animals? What do you mean? There's lots of differences. I don't milk them. Well, what I mean is... I don't eat them. Does eat, that matter? Well, you don't eat the farm animals either. I don't think oh, you're yeah, vegan, right? Either, so, yeah. you know, so I just wonder... No one if, eats them. If, How about that? Well, that, that's a good thing. Mentally, do you see any difference between one is a pet and one is something to be killed? Like, do you see any difference between... Not a physical difference, but... The fact that you've decided to have oh, the dog both, as a pet, not right, the cow right, as a right, pet. Right, right. Vice no, no, but no, no, no. I, I have met cows in my life. Mm-hmm. Um, I used to live near uh, upstate New York. Near, In fact, I went to school at Cornell, which is near mm-hmm. um, okay. this organization, Farm Sanctuary. Yes, um, yes Where Farm you Sanctuary. can go, uh, you know, give pigs belly rubs yeah. and stuff. And that's the, you know, kind of kind of meet your meat kind of like, oh. Right, I yeah. mean, after you give a pig a belly rub, it's kind of hard. You, what, uh, I mean, what's wrong? You know, people. it's kind of. Yeah. Um, but you know, and you know, look, they all have different personalities. I mean, yes. it's very one. Some are grumpy. Some are, you know, snuggly. Um, yeah. And so, you know, right. So you get a sense, right? So I think you come into with this kind of monolithic thing that they're all kind of, I don't know, right. dumb or whatever. Yes. But they're all just like it's just like a big. It's like a big puppy dog. Like yes. A cow is just like yes. a big puppy dog with a big tongue. Yes, and, uh, yes, yes. And you can see the connection and the connection between the cow and the yeah, cow's you look babies. Them in the and, eye. And, yes, I mean, and it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it, yeah, then, then it's hard to, it's, yeah, sure. it's kind of hard to, it's hard to, and so people just, but they don't have those relationships. Right. I mean, they have relationships with the animals in their homes, um, and they just couldn't imagine anything. I mean, if, right. if we did what, you know, they do in these factory farms to animals and cats. I mean, if they did that to oh, dogs I and cats, I, yeah. that's probably, it's like illegal. There's like cruelty statutes. You can't, you couldn't do you that to You actually cannot. Right, right. That's an excellent point. All right, you, so, you yeah. cannot do what happens in factory farms right. on the and premises of your home. I mean, they're all, I mean, they're all it's like, illegal. I mean, well, and the birds. I mean, they, but they, you know, these are these, you know, right? They all feel pain. They all, right? They all, yeah. Pain. Back to Darwin, 1800s, the emotions right, right. and I mean, we, pain and right, 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 suffering right, right, of animals. Right, right. Yeah, well documented scientifically. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you know your purpose in the world? And if so, what is it? Absolutely. Go on, tell us. It's to share the good news that we have tremendous power over our. Health, destiny, and longevity, the vast majority of premature death and disability is preventable with a plant-based diet and other healthy lifestyle behaviors is to get that message out to the world. That's my goal. Is that what you'd like to be known for? That's right. Put it on the gravestone. <laughs> okay, okay. What do you wish you knew 10 years ago that you know today? Oh, I mean, the, the, the power. I mean... I, you know, I was traveling around on the road, you know, to get this message out, literally like, you know, to 100 people at a time and rotary clubs and wherever, you know, speaking in medical schools. Um, then I realized, look, I got to get this out there. I got to tape it. So I started doing VHS tapes and then, yes, then yes, DVDs yes, yeah. um, until it finally went online with Nutrition Facts was Born. All my work was put online and now reaches millions of people. And I just wish... That would have went online. I mean, I just, yeah. I just didn't know. I mean, I didn't have the technical know-how to know how to make a website and all that stuff until someone just approached me and said, "Look, I know how to make a website. Let me make a website for you." I was like, "Please! Oh my God!" And so now, instead of reaching, you know, dozens of people on a day-to-day basis as a doctor, um, or hundreds of people on a day-to-day basis speaking to people, or thousands of people sending out DVDs to people, now I'm reaching millions of people. 
And so that, I mean, so that, and so, and if I would have started the website one month earlier, it'd be that many more lives I could have saved. And so I just, I don't know why it took me so long to finally get it up and running, but I just didn't know how to do it. And what are your predictions for the future? And that could be next week. That could be 10 years from now. That could be about nutrition and plant-based diets. That could be about Mars. Anything you want to talk about. No, the the, the revolution is upon us. Yes, right. I mean, the, I mean, it's just... That no longer can the industry kind of silence the truth. I mean, if you go back to like the 1950s, um, the tobacco industry could control the AMA. In fact, the American Medical Association came out opposed to the, officially opposed to the Surgeon General report against smoking. They said smoking is good for you, all that stuff. And why? They just got a $10 million check from the tobacco industry. I mean, it's just, but look, pay off the doctors and you control the message. Control mm-hmm. the doctors, control the message. What are you going to do? Read Encyclopedia Britannica? Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, you know, you, you know. But now, there's no longer this kind of monopolization of medical knowledge. Now, right. people can have access, take control of their health. And when it comes to these safe, simple, side effect free solutions, you don't need a doctor to tell you to stop smoking, to stop. I mean, you right. can reach out. And of course, there's so much garbage out on the internet, but, you know, the truth kind of floats to the to surface. The top. Right. Um, and, you know, people just try and realize, oh my God, this works. Um, and, and so the science is getting out. And so instead of, you know, Ornish's study, look, this was 1990, proving for the first time heart disease could be reversed. Already it's opened up without drugs, without surgery. The cure to the number one killer of men and women, yet hundreds of thousands of people continue to die from this preventable, arrestable, reversible disease. It's because no one knows about it. It was published in the most prestigious medical journal in the world, but just kind of lost to the dustbin of history. But now people can have access to this information. We have this mountain of evidence. It's just a matter of getting it out there. So I have, uh, it's ex- and it, we have an exciting future. So you don't foresee this as a trend or anything that would come and go? You know, sometimes they're, like I said, the paleo diet and these things that come and go. Oh, as, well, as there's trends. always, I mean, people are always going to, I mean, people love getting good news about their bad habits. And so right. someone, so putting, you know, bacon on the cover or butter is always going to sell more magazines than putting broccoli on the cover. Um, carcinogen but, bacon, just FYI, well, absolutely. people. Absolutely, I R C, a known human carcinogen. Yes, Process known. Meat. Yes, yeah, World yeah. Health Organization yeah. has declared yeah. Category same. One. Category one. Category yeah. one. So I have one last question for All you. All right, let's do it. it. Has nothing to do with plants. Uh oh. It's a tad bit indiscreet, but here we go. Whoa. If you're a game. Yes. It's a two-part question, so if you can bear with me okay. till we get to part two. I'm with you. I mean this in the most loving of ways. Yes, dear. <laughs> Do you consider yourself a nerd? And if so, we'll move to part two. Nutrition nerd, absolutely. Okay. Okay. So since you consider yourself a nerd, usually, maybe not your case, but usually nerds have a tricky time in high school. And Uh then they, you know, sort of Uh whatever. Right, right. When did you realize that your nerdness was going to work for you? Oh, well, the nerdness was back then. So I would skip, um, skip class. To go, so skip high school to go to SUNY Binghamton, which is where I, to to go to the university and go to the science library and read science journals. I mean, that was, in fact, I, in one grade, I missed more than a third of the, so I just show up for tests. Yeah, right, and, and you would do fine on the test well, without I mean, going to class because I, I mean, well, I don't need a doctor to read out of the. I mean, I don't need a, a a teacher to read out. I can read out of a textbook. Why do you have to? It's such a waste of time. Um, but I remember one year I missed more than a third of the school year, and there's like some law or rule that you can't pass if you, no matter what your grades right. are. There's like there's a certain number of days you had to mix, and I, there was like some I don't know they I forget how my parents figured it out or something. But there was like some like they didn't want, me, and of course I had straight A's and everything. But that's but because it was just you know. But, but I was I was in the science library. I was in the basement. I'm reading. That's, in fact, when I saw July 21st, 1990, when Ornish published his landmark Uh, lifestyle art trial in The Lancet. That's where I learned it. So 1990 is your turnaround when you thought, like, all right, being a nerd actually is going to work for me. Well, I mean, well, to me, it was just like being rational Mm -hmm. and being basing. I mean, it just didn't seem 
uh, seem radical to, or I don't know, to just base your decisions on evidence. On nutritionfacts.org. There you go. And How Not to Die and the How Not to Die cookbook. And tell me the name of the app again. Oh, so Dr. Gregor's Daily Dozen. Dr. De- Gregor's Daily free, Dozen. Like everything, and all my free, proceeds free. that I get from all my books all goes to charity. Because we love you. Aww, we absolutely free. do. I want to thank Dr. Gregor for being here with me in San Diego. I'm Elizabeth Alfano, host of the Awesome Vegans Podcast live in San Diego on Jane Unchained. Thanks for joining me, everybody. Bye. Bye. Eat healthy. <laughs>